Carpets. So we're going back to the days of overhead, but I guess that's appropriate since we're dealing with the Great Pyramid. And this is out of the time period um, of some of the books that were at the turn of the century when Napoleon went over to the pyramids. You know, that was the big renaissance was when he, it's been rediscovered many, many times. But this is when uh, our modern knowledge happened is when Napoleon went out with his army and undug the Sphinx mm -hmm. from its sandy trap and started really doing a modern analysis of the Great Pyramid. And um, this is sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought we'd handle this one on its own. I'm a little disorganized because I didn't realize till this afternoon that I didn't have nearly the detail already prepared that I wanted to. So I have maybe a little too much in uh, my documentation and haven't made it concise. But we have to go back, a little bit further back to Babylon to help appreciate why the pyramid is so great. As far beyond, you know, it used to be covered in uh, limestone. It supposedly had a cap that was gold to take and capture the rays of the sun. And then almost all the pyramids had seven colors of the rainbow on it to represent the seven visible planets. But over time, all, all that cover has been uh, taken off and redone. Just like in Rome, the Vatican is totally built off of the um, Colosseum. They just stripped it uh, bare of all the stone. And it was fairly common in old Egypt and all the old world that why go back and quarry something from the beginning if it's already been nicely dressed and, and measured for you. They just take and disassemble it and make something else out of it. And so that's what's happened over time with the pyramid. Kind of like pagan holidays. Yeah. So to go back to the Great Pyramid, we have to go further back to the ziggurats in Babylon. And uh, Skinsini was a uh, Levito Skinsini, worked for MIT, and he um, studied ancient uh, geometry uh, and um, was a mathematician. And so he was analyzing why they built those seven step pyramids the way they do, because it's a precursor, a precursor to the Great Pyramid. And that's because. The whole point of a pyramid, particularly the Great Pyramid, is it is a perfect ratio and measurement of the northern hemisphere. Every single face on that pyramid represents a quadrant of our northern hemisphere from the equator up to the North Pole, which in, in those days is absolutely phenomenal that they could have done that. But they were much better, uh, they started the concept of surveying. In fact, the Great Pyramid was used as a geodetic marker so that with triangulation, they could survey all of the northern and the lower Egypt. And so they placed their cities in very key points to uh, either represent the constellation of Orion because it represented Osiris and everything about the pharaohs was about the Osiris myth or it was for taking exact measurements so that they could measure the year and the days. And so in particular is that each level of the ziggurat has an area corresponding to standard units of land surface. Particularly important in Mesopotamia, land surveying was the square with the side of six double cubics, the surface of the third step. And we won't get through all of that. But the third, fourth, and fifth steps are out make triangles with sides related to the Pythagorean 3, 4, 5 triangle, which is a very basic part of geometry. And the first step of the ziggurat was intended to represent the 30th parallel, but in Mesopotamia it was raised to 33 degrees, the approximate latitude of Babylon. Thereafter, the Babylonians made each step rise in units of 6 degrees of latitude which is why the levels keep getting smaller, just like you'll see on the globe that you're at the widest point at the equator and you're at the smallest point at the North Pole. And so they're doing that same staggering as if you were looking at the Northern Hemisphere. 
as a Babylon's like to count by sixes with a hexadecimal and a sexagesimal system, the steps of the road cigarette rose to multiples of six degrees, which is why you see it stagger. Hmm. Oh, I have one more thing to say about that. To make a map projection of the northern hemisphere, the Egyptians found a simple mathematical and geometric means of reducing the curved surface of a globe to a flat surface suitable for mapping. They used the step pyramid, or the ziggurat, each face of which could represent a 90 degree quadrant of the hemisphere, and each level of which could represent a mappable zone between two parallels of latitude. And remember, they didn't have algebra. But they knew how to measure, which is what we're talking about when we go uh, looking at a sacred geometry tree tomorrow, is that they didn't have algebra, but they did picture representation and proportional representation to do all these advanced math concepts that we think are all modern or that we think that the Greeks invented. But in truth, it was representative in Babylon and it was representative in Egypt before the Greeks. And then the Zerat of Nabu was called the house of the seven bonds of heaven and earth and was in seven stages said to be painted in seven planetary colors. <coughs> The area between the equator and the pole was divided into seven bands or zones, as the Greeks called them, each diminishing in width to correspond to the shrinking degree of longitude. The baseline represented the equator, the first step, the, third, the 30th parallel. Thus, each falcade represented a 90 quadrant of the hemisphere, even though it was flat. Hmm. So, do you guys know that the Great Pyramid swallows the sun. Huh. It's designed exactly that in early spring when the sun rises just high enough above the apex of the Great Pyramid that the whole shadow on the north face disappears instantly at mm -hmm. high noon huh. so that they could measure their hours. Mm -hmm. And they use obelisks many distances apart to measure the transit of a star to measure time too. Uh, they had 10 day weeks because they, and that's where you get the 36 decades come from Egypt. And that's how long it takes, which is 10 days for a star to transit off the horizon at night and then another one will come up. And so they measured the night hours with the stars rising at night and then gave it names. And so because 360 degrees divided 36, is 10 degrees. <coughs> and so that's how long it took for a, a star to rise every night. But also they found that there was actually over here that there was um, pavement on one side of the pyramid. Cotsworth found that part of the pavement north of the pyramid was paved in blocks whose widths were close to four and a half foot radiation of the sun's shadow on successive days just before the pyramid consumed its own shadow in the spring. So they could measure the hours on the grid of the pavement of the shadow of the sun before that. So they were they were masters. And then the top diagram is shows the uh, winter solstice goes so a shadow of 648 feet, deduct half the pyramid's base of 760 feet or 380, and the maximum length of the pyramid's winter shadow would be 268 feet. So they spent years creating these foundations. And I wish I had, uh, I have to get that picture of Seshant. She was before.